All right, we are live on Facebook. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation for any of the panelists, feel free to chat them in the Zoom webinar chat or the Q&A. Either one is completely fine. If you're catching us on Facebook Live, feel free to comment under the post, and we will read um, the Q&A from there as well. So tonight, um, we have a town hall uh, with Carla Bailey-Smith. Carla, thanks so much for hosting tonight. Thank you. And thank you, Kelsey, as always, for taking care of our technology. We really appreciate it. It helps all the rest of us concentrate on what we want to say to the audience and what we want to say to each other. So uh, these past few weeks have been tumultuous. We have seen people of all ages gathering, even perhaps risking their health and safety to protest not only the public murder of George Floyd, but the continued devaluing of black and brown bodies. And how did we get here? From years of policies crafted by people in positions of power that shut black and brown people out of the same opportunities as white people and created a system of mass incarceration that has dis disproportionately affected people of color. I hope that our nationwide and in fact worldwide protests will lead to the changes that are being demanded. My first four guests are members of a youth activist group called Next Gen Initiative. I was so inspired by their actions recently that I asked them to come here and tell us what they want for their future. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves uh, because I don't want to get any, I don't want to get any names wrong. So please introduce yourselves. Um, tell us uh, a little bit about how you decided to, to form an official group. And I'm also interested in hearing how old you are. Um, I think that will, that, will speak, that will speak to our audience. So please go ahead and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Thurston Stevenson. I'm 28 years old. Oh, my name is Thurman Stevenson. I'm also 28 years old. My name is Dominique Stevenson. I'm 24 years old. I'm Austin Willis, and I'm 21. A little bit about how we got started. Um, we're actually planning a podcast with that name, and we're still working on the podcast, but uh, they got put on the back burners a little bit as things have been moving at a, a beautiful pace for us. Um, so we went out to a rally uh, with the NAACP uh, I think two Sundays ago now, and um, that was the, the same moment that the, the man drove through the crowd and mm -hmm. hit a couple uh, of the protesters. And uh, me and my brothers, we kind of started doing damage control uh, at that point because everyone was already furious and that was about to be the tipping point in town. At that same moment is when a, a cop car uh, window got busted out uh, in the mayhem. So we just started trying to get everybody back and um, fast forward a little bit. Uh, people are, are upset with the riot police that showed up. And um, it came to a point where uh, a couple of us were talking with the officers and even outside of this room. And they agreed to go inside if we could control people from breaking anything. And I thought that spoke volumes for, the, for the, the department in town to say, we'll, we'll leave if you guys don't break anything. We'll let you protest mm -hmm. and express yourself. Yeah. So the, the riot police went inside and the crowd continued to stay there and, and scream um, somewhat hateful comments and chants, right? So we told everybody at this point, we should take this as a victory and we should move on. So that's when we all kind of put our heads together and said, we got to take control of this crowd the best that we can right now. And whoever stays back, that's their decision if the police come back out and it escalates. So we rallied the crowd and we said, hey, this is where we're going. This is how we're doing things. 
and uh, a large number actually ended up marching with us and we, we took them down through Miller Park and back up and we ended the night at the police station and uh, it was peaceful. Uh, we had cars blocking traffic and, and playing music for us and it was just a really cool way to finish out what almost mm -hmm. turned into a, a catastrophe in town and turn it into something that was beautiful and uplifting. Well, thank you so much for your uh, for your initiative, and and really your honestly your your bravery in in being willing to just gather everybody together and say, hey, um, we're gonna we're gonna lead you. Please please follow us and and don't don't break stuff, and the police will leave us alone, and we can we can have our say. That's awesome. So was it? Um, was it like in the next couple of days that you actually um, took your podcast name and then made the made the Facebook group, or had you already done like a Facebook page because you were doing a podcast? Uh, actually, it was it was that night or the next morning, and uh, that Austin decided like, hey, like we need a name, and uh, so he said that, and I was like, dude, that's perfect. <laughs> We, I, I put out some name and I was like, forget what I said, that's, that's <laughs> perfect. And then uh, once we, and you know, we're not here to, to say how anybody should, should feel about what's going on or, or protest or, you know, um, to each their own. But once we heard about the, uh, the, the looting that took place, uh, we decided that we wanted to go back out. And uh, so that next, that same night or the next morning, I was like, hey, we gotta do something else. So. That night, we or that day, we we did another uh, peaceful protest in Tipton Park. Tipton Park, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mainly, Inside. mainly yeah. it was to like distract from what had happened yeah. with the looting because we didn't we didn't want the the looting and the rioting and not to like judge what they're doing or talk down on what they're doing because I mean we're all angry and we understand mm -hmm. where that's all coming from, mm -hmm. but we didn't want the community to look at all the protesters in town as if everybody's just trying to uh, be violent and cause issues and um, right so decided to do that next march the next day to kind of uh, bring people's spirits up and be like hey this it's not just all looting and stuff we're, we're protesting for, for, for our own yeah. sake as well so you guys are just spontaneous community organizers that's amazing <laughs> i love it um, so where did you have, so tell, so you had a march, um, like that next Monday night or Tuesday night and, and where was that? It was at, uh, Tipton Park is where we started out. That's where everybody gathered, uh, on mm -hmm. the east side of Bloomington mm -hmm. by the airport. Um, right. the reason we picked that area real quick is just because, um, a lot of influential people live on that general side of town. I mean, you got Hawthorne Hills with the mansions and everything. And um, we, we just thought to ourselves, um, when I, when I, we learned about this in, in school, right, in history class. We always hear about the, the riots and, and the protests taking place on the side of town where people understand what you're going through. So I always said, if I ever do anything like this, I, I want to take it to the side where people don't you know, really get to hear us or right. really don't pay attention because it doesn't affect them the same way. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. necessarily that they don't want to know, but it just hasn't been in their face. Yeah, they're unaware, they're right. unaware, a lot of them. So we took it to the east side and uh, we brought music and um, we lifted our voices and we had a, a nice crowd of probably like 30 or 40 people that mm -hmm. were really passionate about it. Yeah, and and some people joined us along the way. And yeah, just, people came out of their homes yeah. and, and they, I mean, we got a great response from that. Yeah. People just said that it like opened their eyes and um, mm -hmm. people prayed with us at the end of the night that were at baseball practice brought and their little kids. brought their kids out. It was a really beautiful thing. It was very nice. Oh, you made me all, you made me all like goosebumpy. That's, yeah, that's did, awesome. Yeah. And then you, and then you did another one um, also on the east side uh, this Monday night, I think. Clearwater, at Clearwater Clearwater, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wanted to go to that area um, because, you know, it has a couple of nicer spots as well, but um, 
Uh, we heard a lot of rumors of them getting flagged down by the KKK and, and they were oh, hanging yeah. like hateful posters in that area. And yeah, there was, that was, there was a flyers that somebody were, who were assuming was a part of the whatever local KKK chapter was putting flyers in people's mailboxes, which is illegal, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we wanted to go out there and kind of just show them that that's not okay. Like, we're not going to deal with that here. Yeah. Make our presence known. Right. So the, the community is standing against what they're trying to promote. So. Awesome. That was another beautiful one. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for, for doing that and for bringing those pro protests to the east side. Um, that's really that's really brilliant, and um, I think I think uh, those of us who take part in in public uh, protest and, and public rallies, we really need to think about um, where we're doing these these uh, rallies and, and protests, and and who our audience is, and and what our reach is. Because if we always do them in front of the BCPA, or we always do them in Uptown Circle. Um, how many people are we really reaching? So I, I'm just so inspired by you guys. Um, so one other thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, have you among yourselves, uh, among your larger uh, friend groups, have you talked about um, legislative changes, um, structural changes within Bloomington Normal, within the state of Illinois that are important to you that you want to see happen? Yeah, so we, we have been brainstorming uh, long-term, mid-term, and short-term goals. Uh, our goal is to present those to the community and online um, before the end of the month. And um, a couple of them that we have, though, uh, is working on the education system, right? So we want um, African-American history to be American history, right? Mm, mm -hmm. It goes hand in hand. So it, it really shouldn't be taught separate. And more than just Martin Luther King. Right. And Rosa Parks. Yeah. Like, right. There's so much more that needs to be learned and which we feel like is a lot of the reason why there's still so much ignorance to what happens today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Accurate and inclusive. And of course, you know, history is written by the victors so right. the people the people with the power and the people who have their own point of view are the ones that have been writing our history books so we need some we need some people of color involved in writing our history books and saying hey we need to make sure people understand um the hundreds of years of oppression and um redlining and yeah. you know denying denying mortgages to people uh right all of that all that all that stuff all that stuff it's, it goes so much of. deeper it goes so much deeper than people know because i was telling austin just the other day we were talking with a friend of ours and they had no idea that we were still fa black families are still being separated purposely purposefully right so mm -hmm. um when i got married we we're still living in my mom's house and we had a baby on the way and we wanted to, you know, move out and everything as we should. Right. Mm -hmm. So we go down to the public aid building and um, the lady is being extremely rude. Right. She keeps calling me her boyfriend instead of her husband, even mm -hmm. though we have rings on. And um, I was just telling everybody that, Back in slavery times, they ripped the fathers out of the home to destabilize the families. And as we still see now, it's a lot of, not just black men, but a lot of black families don't have their fathers, right? America's lacking fathers in general. So the lady tells us that my wife and the baby can be put in housing, but if I come, they'll be denied. So. I was supposed to make the decision to send my family out there and me go to the shelter in order to get on my feet and get things moving, which is really a trick to rip apart the family still. But even that was in 2016, we're still dealing with that on a local mm. level. 
Well, thank you for sharing that experience. That's important. That's important for, for me to hear as, as I run for office and gather information about um, everything that we need to look at to make things better. And uh, that should not be happening. That should not be happening to, to any young family. So, so thank you very much. Um, before we move on to the next, uh, the next panelist, are, is there anything else you want to say to the audience? And I believe, um, I believe I saw that you have a that you have a GoFundMe. Um, so if you want to share that and tell us, uh, maybe share that into the chat. Or Kelsey can, if you say it, Kelsey can type it into the chat and on on Facebook. Um, uh, and tell us what uh, what you would use that money for. Sure. So uh, we started the GoFundMe initially, excuse me, to get our 501c3 status through uh, Illinois Prairie community. I, probably, I think mm -hmm. I said the name backwards, but you all know what I'm referring to, right? I think, Olivia and I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're working with them to get our 501c3 status. Okay. And um, that's what we needed the extra $500 for because um, we got $500 donated to us at the end of the Clearwater Park March. Um, wow. We're just so floored by that. Like, wow, this is, now we just need $500 more so that we could go ahead and get that off the ground officially, right? Right. right. So um, you're an official 501. Right. Nonprofit organization. Yep. And the support that we got already is just so amazing it's, it's wonderful um people have been donating like crazy we're past that goal we made a second goal we passed that goal and what this money is going to be used for is we'll use that money to start the nonprofit and get that rolling and then um we're not going to rush out and just start throwing money at things right so we want to do this the right way and mm -hmm. be able to come through on our promises um some of the other things that we have on our long, short, all of that goals is just um, to be able to create a community center that is extremely active in the community, right? So we don't want to be um, an organization that only pops up when it's a, a crisis in the, in the community or in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be relevant year round and we want to help the community in all ways. Um, obviously, we do have a focus on the black community but um, helping the black community will also help the community as well. So we want to start a community center and have classes of all different sorts that I, I won't get into right now. But um, so money will be put off to the side for that is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, money is going to be put off to the side to, um, to help get these events going and to put them on a bigger magnitude and um, I just want everybody to know we're not going to waste any money. We're not going to use money unnecessarily. And money is also not the uh, deciding factor, obviously, because look what we've accomplished in two weeks with, with no money in our pocket, right? Mm -hmm. So money is just going to uh, add to what we're able to do and, and how we're able to reach people. Great. Thanks. Thanks for letting us know about that. I have to fundraise for my campaign and, and uh, I always want to tell people what I'm using the money for. Yes, always. You know, we're we're bombarded like every day. Somebody wants money from us for something. So I I, I feel it's important to let people know what what the money's for. So thank you for that, um, Kelsey. I think I saw some questions pop up. So could you share uh, any questions for our next gen guys? Absolutely. Um, so there was a question. Did you say there's a local KKK chapter that was passing out leaflets? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so the the flyers that were passed out pretty much were a warning, um, or what we kind of felt like was a warning to uh, looters, rioters, anybody. Pretty much what it said was um a message to that community like hey uh you guys can sleep well tonight because the kkk will be awake and uh we'll take care of any issues if there's any suspicious activity in the neighborhoods 
And that's when also rumors were going around that there was going to be looting, looting going through the neighborhoods and, and things like that. Um, so it had the a KKK member in full robe, uh, kind of like Uncle Sam fashion pointing. And um, from what I've heard, that there, from what I've heard just growing up, there's KKK members around uh, the outskirts of town and things like that. So it's not confirmed who would have done it or um, what specific uh, chapter group people would have done it, but we're assuming that it was um, somebody affiliated with the KKK, obviously. Thanks for sharing more details about that. We got a, a comment on the Facebook Live that that is messed up, and we agree with that. It is, yeah, yeah. 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 So we wouldn't think that we'd be seeing it in, in our in our lifetimes. Yeah, yeah. And well, I know uh, it it wasn't as surprising for for me because I remember a, a very long time ago when we went to uh, for the Assembly of God, the pastor of that church found a, a a flyer for the KKK there, and he was he was. He lived it. He was, he was not like, happy. He was like, not not this church, not not this town. Get this out of here. Yeah. And that's another thing that we, we would like to address um, and, and hope that we can really get the ball rolling with support on that is we, we want to see the KKK and the neo-Nazis considered as domestic terrorist organizations. Uh, I don't believe they should be allowed to operate. Black Panthers got shut down and dispersed. Yeah. I mm -hmm. feel like the KKK um, was doing way worse than the Black Panthers were and, and openly doing it. And they, to an extent, they still are, especially down south. So I think yeah. that needs to be addressed immediately. They shouldn't be allowed to have flyers or marches or meetings or anything. Anybody associated with that should be hunted mm -hmm. down like a criminal and prosecuted. I think uh, that's that's a great idea um, to and that's that's something that can be that that's got to be legislated. So thank you for that uh, prompt. And I'm definitely going to reach out to uh, some current elected officials and figure out um, how do we go about identifying um, declaring the KKK and neo Nazis as domestic terrorism groups and treating them as such. So thank you. Um, Kelsey, were there any other questions from the from the chat or from Facebook for next gen? Yeah, uh, the next question, how can the community best support your efforts in addition to just, you know, we've heard about the GoFundMe, but what else could the community do to support you? I, I would say just just being willing to have conversations and, and having to keep an open mind and an open heart um, and just, uh, if, if you hear something that that isn't true, speaking up, like speaking out against that. And, uh, I mean, you know, we're, we're not looking for money specifically. Uh, we're just looking to, to educate and, and bring awareness to, to people in the community. And, um, honestly, you know, help, this is me at least my, my main focus is to help out the youth in the community so that they can, because they're the future you know and uh mm -hmm. and so we we really want the next generation right. <laughs> we really want them to to be set up for success and, and to yeah. go quicker than we ever went so um just just keep an open mind and an open heart and, and be willing to um, as we as we keep figuring out what we need and, and what we're going to do, just be willing to help in any way. And, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I 100% agree. Uh, only thing I would add is, is like you were saying, just um, people's willingness to and, and being available to us, right? So um, there's certain things that money can never get you, right? So um, mm -hmm. certain people have certain status that, that can be beneficial to us as we move forward. Right, some people have uh, resources that money can't buy, and mm -hmm. that being way more valuable than uh, somebody giving us a million dollars, right? Yeah. Because um, what we can do with that person's knowledge and background can be far greater than uh, what a check could do for the organization. And that's the kind of people that we are: is um, 
were genuine and the help that we get is solely based off of uh, what we need at that time. And like he said, we'll continue to figure that out. So please just watch the Facebook page, mm -hmm. you know, reach out to us personally uh, as you feel led and we'll, we'll continue to make progress. There was a follow-up question. Um, are you interested in looking to spread to other cities? We, we've, gotten a, we've gotten a couple uh, of um, suggestions and people asking if we would help lead marks, especially in smaller towns that don't have really any uh, presence of, of, of African-Americans, black, black people. Um, right, right now we're still in the process of figuring out our goals and stuff. I see you down there. I see you. <laughs> Peeking, what up? <laughs> we know, we know y'all started doing that with, with some diversity. <laughs> no, but, but we, if we can get into, uh, other, other areas, that's something we're definitely considering in the yeah. future as we move forward. Cause yeah. We're at the end of the day, we're just here to help. Like, this isn't about yeah. just just Bloomington. I mean, it's got to start here, obviously. Right. But if we can spread out and help people around the area, absolutely. And and part of that is is to build like to build other oh sorry, to build other leaders. Like you can't you can't just want to be the top dog all the time. So yeah, we we. We would love if somebody wants to like spread this out. We would love to have like sessions where we help build other leaders and help them to mm -hmm. understand like how they can lead better and and you know things like that. So um, yeah, this is we're, we're not you know this, like they said this isn't just about Bloomington Bloomington normal and only Bloomington normal. So uh, yeah, just reach out and, and we're willing to help any way we can. Yeah. There was another question. Um, would you be interested in hosting a voter registration drive? Um, we have several deputy registrars who are available and would be interested in partnering with you. It's interesting that we got that question. So somebody actually just reached out to us um, and asked if we would have things um, set up for people to vote at the beginning of the march and at the end of the march. And we all agree that that is something that we really do want to do. Um, voting is extremely important. Uh, it's a, a misconception. I can't speak for other communities, but it's a misconception in the black community that our vote doesn't matter. Um, but I also know that a lot of us don't vote. Um, and that's not a, a shot at anybody, but it's just <laughs> it's just oftentimes we just don't vote right so um we do want to help change that while we while we have the opportunity to uh, kind of influence people and i'm preaching to the choir because you know slap on the wrist but i'll be honest with you i didn't i didn't vote you know the last couple of times that it came up so that's just the local. Oh, am i the only one yeah <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. especially the local like i mean we're, we're well, exactly. Okay, guys, I appreciate your honesty because the truth is sometimes we don't have anybody to vote for. Sometimes there's only one choice on the ballot. Sometimes you feel like you're voting for the lesser of two evils. So you need somebody to vote for. You need somebody who's going to listen to your concerns and take those concerns and turn it into meaningful legislation, meaningful policy, and uh, actions that are actually going to make a difference. I want to be, I want to be that person. And I can tell you that there are, uh, there's, there are two county board members that are attending this webinar and listening to you guys. And they are the type of people to be not just allies. <laughs> What's that word, Olivia? Not not allies, but accomplices. 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 We want to be accomplices. We want to be. We want to be part of the change. Definitely. Yeah. That's something. All right. So before, oh, did we lose Heather? Oh no, <laughs> we're just about ready to move to Heather. Hopefully she'll uh, she'll come back. If if not, we'll go to Olivia, and then hopefully Heather can rejoin. Um, Heather's in Pekin. And uh, sometimes, oh, no, that's Kelsey. 
sometimes uh, if people are on uh, wireless internet, sometimes it cuts out in some of the rural areas. Um, Kelsey, were there any more questions uh, for the next gen guys from Facebook or uh, or the chat? Um, not right now, but if you do still have questions, again, you can feel free to comment on the Facebook live post. We are reading those. Um, for those of you in the Zoom webinar, in the chat or the Q&A is completely fine there as well. Okay. Well, hopefully Heather will be able to rejoin us, uh, but I'll go ahead and, uh, and skip forward to uh, Olivia. Um, so Olivia and I uh, have worked together for several years now on a couple of different um, community projects. And um, in the last year and a bit, um, we worked with, first of all, a local group uh, with uh, Black Lives Matter, a couple of people from the ACLU, people from my Unitarian Universalist Church. Um, to talk about ending cash bail. And we just started with our group in Bloomington Normal and then quickly realized that there were um, other groups in other cities and we got information from them and uh, within, probably within the next six months after starting our conversations, we joined the statewide network uh, for pre-trial, I'll just stand up for a second, Pre-trial fairness, the Illinois Network for Pre-trial Fairness. Oh, Heather's back. I just introduced Olivia Heather, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bump you to the end. Uh, so Olivia, um, please tell us uh, why we need to end money bail um, and all of the repercussions, why it's important, and how it affects our specifically our communities of color. Right. So, hey, Carla, thanks for having me. Um, so I think first it's important to know a little bit about what cash bail is. Um, so basically, if you think about someone who's arrested, right, someone is doing something or not doing something wrong, um, they get arrested, they get charged and they get booked. Uh, if they're in McLean County, they go to the McLean County Jail right down in downtown Bloomington. And then they have a bond hearing. So they go before a judge and that judge um, can do a couple things. They can deny them bond, which means they can't leave at all. Um, they can give them a money bond uh, or they can give them a non-financial release. And basically the bond is the process of releasing someone who is a, accused of a crime while their case is pending. So I think the really important thing to remember is when we're talking about money bond, we're talking about pretrial. So these are people who have not been convicted of any crime. There are plenty of people who go to jail here in McLean County and then go to trial and they don't, they're not convicted of any crime, right? So we're talking about pre-trial incarceration. And so uh, when we think about Illinois jails and we think about the jail in McLean County, people are sitting in jail because they can't afford their money bond. So I think there's like a statistic, it's like over 90% of jails in, in Illinois, 90% um, of the people there are uh, sitting there because they can't afford their money bond. And so I think when we talk about black people, we talk about people of color, um, the reason that it, this affects them more is we know that people of color are uh, disproportionately affected throughout the whole process of the justice system. We know they're over policed. Uh, we know they're over arrested. We know they're overcharged. And we also know that they get higher bail set for the same crimes as their white counterparts. So we got a ton of people sitting in McLean County jail whose bails are too high for them to afford. Um, and again, we're talking pre-trial, haven't been convicted of any crime. So then it's like, well, what do you lose when you're sitting in jail, right? Well, you could lose your job. You could lose your house. You could lose um, your family. Uh, it, there's so many things that you could lose. And so when we think about people of color and we think about poor folks who this issue primarily affects, it's like you a lot of times you can't afford, if you already can't pay your $500 bond, like you can't afford to miss work. You can't afford to miss work and then miss rent, right? Like those are, those are the kind of folks we talk about when we're talking about who does cash bond, you know, really affect. And so um, on a state level, which is really great, we're able to talk to you about this, right? Is on a state level, you can enact policy that says we don't have any more money bond in Illinois. We can completely eliminate cash bond as a system that we use here in Illinois. So 
uh, Black Lives Matter moving to normal joined a group called the Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice. And our goal is to end cash bond in Illinois. And we don't want to just end cash bond and replace it with something else that's going to uh, disproportionately affect black folks and poor folks, right? We want to end cash bond and make things better for people, um, especially black folks and poor folks. But um, people always say, okay, like, so you want to end cash bond, what, what will you replace it with, right? And I think there are different ways to do that. We've seen different communities, different states have eliminated cash bond, uh, different counties have already eliminated it, and they're working through different ways. But I think the main goals that we see are mandatory, non-monetary release for as many people as possible, um, and using more supportive means to get people to come back to their court date. So people need childcare, people need a ride, people need um, access to some of these things to help them get back to that court date. But also we want to decriminalize a lot of different things so that people stay out of the system altogether. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's decriminalize some of these like low nonviolent drug offenses we see. Like we mm -hmm. don't need people locked up in McLean County for marijuana. Are you joking? Like we just don't yeah, need that. Shouldn't be. They we shouldn't sure be anymore anyway. Right. Like <laughs> let's get that out of here completely. So like, exactly. you know, when we hear uh, another thing we hear a lot is, well, it's a public safety issue. Um, and when I, when I hear that, it's like, well, if a judge has given you a bond, whether it's $20 mm -hmm. or $750,000, they have decided that you are not a threat to public safety. Um, there are people who commit, you know, significant crimes and have three quarters of a million dollars to get out on bond. And then there are people who commit very petty crimes um, and don't have $500 or $1,000, right? And so, um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the issue in a nutshell. I mean, mm -hmm. I can see what kind of questions you have for me or any questions that anyone else has, but BLM has been fighting this issue on a local level for, for a while now. We've raised over $10,000. We've bailed out nine people. Um, and we want to bail out more people. Right. And it's, it, and like, I think people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're bailing people out. Well, we're bailing people out and we're trying to educate you on the system and the problems. It's, it's both of those pieces. We're not just trying to bail people out. We're trying to do both parts. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the big change is going to come at the state level. Like Illinois needs to eliminate cash bail. So, Right. And um, so Olivia and I participated in a lobby day in Springfield in February before the pandemic hit. And um, there's, there's movement on this. The, the law is being written, the language is being worked on, um, and of course, um, setting up a different system, you know, something to replace cash bail so that it's a risk assessment and not putting a price on somebody's head, basically. And I'm definitely very curious to know what where the money goes, uh, because a lot of times uh, people pay their bail and you're supposed to get your money back when you show up for court. And a lot of folks don't get very much money back. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, we, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, we see that um, because we pay people's bails, right? And we're always like, hey, you know, if there's money left over, give it back to us because we want to pay as many people's bails as they can. Mm -hmm. Like you think about Chicago, Chicago has like a bail fund and it revolves. So they, they get out, they give the money back, it revolves back, they can get more people out. Like we would love to do that, but the amount of fines and fees that get taken out of that money, it's unbelievable. So even if we pay a bond that's $1,500, $2,000, sometimes we end up only getting a hundred, couple hundred dollars back. Um, it's just really, it's unreal. Right. And uh, before we uh, take questions and then, and then hear from Heather and Pekin, um, I want, Olivia, I want to give you a chance to uh, promote your Juneteenth bailout. Yeah, so um, just like NextGen kind of mentioned, they're working on revamping some of their demands or things that they're going to be doing. BLM's doing the same. 
we're really excited to see like so many people interested in what we're doing. We're excited to see organizations like next gen popping up. This is so awesome. Like can't wait to work with them. We have a meeting scheduled with our leadership team and their leadership team. So I'm pretty excited about that, but um, we are going to be hosting a Juneteenth mobilization. Uh, we're going to be releasing our demands that day and hosting a mobilization. We're also going to be bailing someone out that day. So you'll see our fundraiser popping up here in the next couple of days, probably on our socials and on Facebook, but we're going to be raising money to bail someone out on Juneteenth, right? Talk, we're talking about freedom and we're talking about freedom um, from the, from the money bond system. Right. So that will be on um, Black Lives Matter Blono Facebook page. Yeah. You've got the link ready. Yep, the Black Lives Matter Facebook page has an event already. It's called Juneteenth, a mobilization for Black liberation. Mm -hmm. um, and we encourage people to check out that event and stay tuned for uh, what's going on on June 19th. Awesome. Okay, so Kelsey, were there any questions from Facebook or the chat for um, Olivia or I about, um, about ending, ending money bond? Yes, um, so there was a quick comment. Um, RJ has been watching the Canadian police videos and noticed they already have such a system in place or one kind of like it. Um, there was a question, what's the most effective way for citizens to support this legislation at the state level? Hmm. Well, um, right now, I guess you could um, contact your current state representative or state senator and let them know that you that you support this um, also um, I, I didn't I didn't think to give you this link ahead of time Kelsey but uh, there is an official organization um, Illinois do you, do you have the official name Olivia Illinois uh, pretrial fairness yes. thank you oh the Illinois tree prep Pre-Trial Pre Fairness Act. Yes, that's that's what the legislation is called. Um, the organization, um, Illinois Network for Pre-Trial Justice. I yes, INPJ. INPJ, Illinois Network for Pre-Trial Justice. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, so you could certainly contact them. Um, Olivia and I tend to go on a on a Zoom call with them once a month, and we kind of check in and and uh, share ideas about um, doing community education. And honestly, before the pandemic, um, we were going to have a community education event and that just completely fell off the radar. Um, but now that we're all used to Zoom, maybe that's what, maybe that's something that, that we should do is do a community education event, even if it is like this on Zoom. Yeah. So that so that so that more people um, can learn about about this legislation. Yeah, exactly. And I think like so right before the pandemic in January and February, we hosted a community event that where people were able to like learn a little bit more about cash bail. Mm -hmm. um, and then we launched a program for court watching where we were kind of going to start yeah. keeping an eye out for um, having people actually go to these bond hearings mm -hmm. and writing down information about people and the bonds that they're getting. So it's like, oh, you know, we have a black uh, male in here and his crime is this and this is what his bond is. You know, then we have a white male, same, same crime, because we need some more statistics from McLean County. Unfortunately, because of COVID, that's kind of been shut down for the time being. But um, once bond hearings are open to the public again, and we're able to do that, I think we'll re resume that court watching program as well. Right. Okay, any more, any more questions, Kelsey? For Olivia? Um, that is all right now, but again, another quick plug, if you have questions, feel free to chat them in or post them as a comment on the Facebook Live. Okay. Austin? Did you, Austin, did you, did you want to say something, Austin? As far as the Juneteenth thing, Olivia, is that, uh, is that going to be at Miller Park again? Or is, um, we don't have a location for it yet, um, so we're trying to figure out the best place, but I think it is going to be more of like a active mobilization than a meeting. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, our last uh, panelist for tonight is, is Heather York, and um, I wanted to find somebody from Tazewell County 
to join us in this conversation tonight because the state representative district that I'm running in um, covers a large portion of Tazewell County. Um, it includes Mackinac and Morton and Washington and um, Groveland and a little, little bit of East Pekin. Um, Pekin is the county seat for Tazewell. So if there's um, an action or a rally that, that people are going to have, like right at the courthouse, in P it's going to be in Pekin, which is not actually in my district, but uh, it's the county seat of Tazewell. So um, Heather uh, was one of the organizers of a group called Say Their Names in Pekin, and they had their first event last Saturday, um, which, you know, for Tazewell County, which is overwhelmingly white and probably still has some active KKK in Tazewell County. Um, I thank you for, for doing that. And please tell us how that happened. How did a bunch of white people in Tazewell County decide to decide to do this? Um, well, I just want to say first off, thank you for reaching out to me. Um, it's been kind of like a friend of a friend of a friend type thing where I have people, I have no idea who they are reaching out to me, but I know the chain, you know, that, that got them to me. Um, I, I think kind of what happened with that was um, it, it started uh, with a conversation between people I don't even know. Um, Tiffany, uh, who is non-binary, goes by they, them, uh, sh uh, said to one of their friends, you know, what if these protests came to peak and how crazy would that be? And uh, they reached out to Brittany Wagley, who is an acquaintance of mine. Um, she reached out to her friends to just kind of garner interest. Like, you know, what if Pekin did that? How crazy would that be? You know, because we're, we're very known. I've got a friend here who can, uh, you know, vouch that we're, we're pretty known for KKK activity up here yeah. still. I mean, even up into the 90s, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and if we don't have active KKK members, we definitely have sympathizers here for sure. Um, but eventually it got down the line to me while I was already kind of thinking of planning an event. And I was like, I mean, yeah, let's do it. You know, um, I kind of tabled my idea that I had planned to set, you know, a bit out to garner some interest. Um, so I just kind of wanted to support the more pressing event coming up. Uh, we had a zoom meeting on what our first event would look like. And during that meeting, uh, Doug Johnson of Peoria DSA helped us prepare. And after that, it just kind of took off. Uh, we had our first rally at Peak and Courthouse. Uh, anywhere between 150 and 200 came. Um, and we just kind of focused on garnering attention and letting people know, you know, kind of what our deal was. Um, the, so the entire message of that first event was just straight up, these people did not need to die. They should not have died. We are grieving. We are pissed. And we're here as a group of mostly white kids from Pekin to let the police, racists, and racist sympathizers know that we will not stand for this. We will stand with our black community, never speaking for them or talking over them in the interest of just doing what's right. And now that we've done that and we have that attention, you know, we can move forward with how we plan to fix the system from the bottom up. Uh, the focus of the next rally is going to be to hear stories from people of color who have decided you know, it might be safe. There were no incidents at the last event to speak of. Um, so we're, we're, we just really want to hear stories from people of color, as well as to present a comprehensive list of demands for our city. Uh, and it ranges anywhere between, you know, demilitarizing our police, better training for them, more specific mm -hmm. training, you know, sensitivity training, and how to kind of step down and use other public workers in situations that, I mean, let's be real, they're just ill-equipped for. Right. You know, they don't need to show up with guns in a situation where, you know, they called 911, but they should have called a social worker. So we're just kind of mm -hmm. trying to get the ball rolling on that. And that event is this Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, at Peak and Courthouse. Awesome. So uh, two questions. Sure. Um, why did you choose uh, Say Their Names? And did you do you have some people of color lined up to talk on Saturday? Okay, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, for your first question about Say Their Names, um, in a way, Say Their Names just sort of fell into our laps. Um, 
Our first event, I wasn't really a host of. I was one of the main organizers, and I let uh, Brittany Wagley and uh, Ezra Colum of Peoria, who is a uh, black trans man, um, so I just kind of let them run it. And um, the event, they called it Justice for George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, you know, and made, made a long list. And for me personally, it just didn't say enough about us as a group. Um, so I made some suggestions for the name of the next of the next event, and we took a vote on it. So uh, say their names just kind of ended up being the the front runner by a long shot, and from there it was just sort of our organization name as well. Like anybody that reached out to me, that's what they knew us as, and so we just took another vote. Like, is this just what we want to be called? And that's yeah. how that kind of came about. Um, and to answer your second question, we we do plan to have uh, a couple people of color come and speak. And again, with it being Pekin and having the, um, let's say the, the vibe that Pekin has, we, we can't be a hundred percent sure until the day of, you know, who all will come out to speak. Um, <laughs> but um, we do have Ezra, like I said, a black trans man on our, mm -hmm. on our uh, committee. And then uh, a dear friend of mine, Amy Marshall, who grew up in St. Louis um, and now lives up in like LaSalle, Peru area. Uh, she is a black member of the LGBT plus community as well. And she plans to speak. Um, I know she wants to do some spoken words. She wants to address the crowd and do some demonstrations, some exercises, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and she's actually going to bring her eight year old son as well to kind of like let people know it, it is safe here. You know, we have a remarkable security team. We have medics stationed all mm -hmm. over the place in case anything happens. Um, not that we plan to need to utilize it, but we're just kind of coming Good out and letting Pekin and know. Yeah, yeah, we're just letting Pekin and know, you know, we're not standing for this and we mm -hmm. will protect our people if we need to, but we're here to do something peaceful and make a positive change. Um, and then if any other person of color, you know, approaches me and wants to speak on an issue, then we'll talk about it and hand them a megaphone as well. So you guys are all willing, or uh, rather all welcome to come. Uh, we would absolutely love to have you out if you're if you're not busy. It's from three to five. So we kind of tried to plan it between the the big events that are going to happen around noon and then the stuff that's going to happen in the evening. We wanted to kind of plan it right in the middle uh, and reach just a different crowd than the last time. So right. Yeah. So that's this Saturday. That's two days from now, right? Yep. At Pekin. Yep. Uh, okay. So one other question I had for you sure. was. Um, at your uh, at your rally in Pekin, do you did you have a sense if people from other parts of Tazewell County um, came in? Like, did, do you think you had some people from uh, Morton and Washington come over and join you? Oh, absolutely, we did. Uh, I'm from Market Heights myself. I live in Pekin now. Um, mm -hmm. Our main hosts last week were Brittany Wagley. She's uh, she actually lives in East Peoria now, and then mm -hmm. Ezra, um, our our one person of color uh, that hosted last week. Uh, he is from St. Louis, now residing in the Peoria area. And then yeah. from there, I recognized a few acquaintances from you know Peoria, Washington area. And I met some pretty well-known citizens from the Bloomington area as well. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all folks that at least intend to come back out on Saturday, mm -hmm. as well as some more folks in the Peoria, Morton areas. And then I've already spoken on Amy. She's from LaSalle, Peru, but she'll be one of our main speakers as well. So we have, um, more of a broad range of people coming from more places as well as, you know, more actual people of color to come and speak on their issues so that we can right. actually stand behind them instead yes. of just, you know, saying stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's awesome, Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a leader in your community as well. This is, this is important. This is inspiring. I hope, I hope uh, people who are watching now or maybe watching later on YouTube will be inspired to, be uh, spontaneous community organizers and um, and and know that there's a lot of resources out there if you just look and we've got the internet at our fingertips you can you can figure out how to uh, how to do community organizing on the fly um, yeah it's so uh, thank it's, you <laughs> yeah thank you uh, it's it's been very interesting so far and um, I just appreciate the the platform to be able to speak um, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. I've, I'm 27 years old. I've never rallied before in my life. And I mean, you see how well it's going. So yeah. definitely appreciate you reaching out to me. That's great.
Uh, next gen guys, do you have a do you have a question, or were you just like like giving her? Uh, well, it's just I want to commend you for um, stepping out in, in the type of community that you're in. Straight up. I mean, yeah. you're, it's bold. Like, you're really bold. <laughs> not, bold. I, I like the way that you're talking about I mean, it too. Like it, it's no timidness in your voice, and and that's admirable really right. it is we're sitting here talking I'm, about like i'm like people I'm, act, asking us to go to the small towns around the area we're like we gotta be careful you know man. what i mean I we're like that. we're like and strategizing I, <laughs> how to get to those areas and reach those people and, and you just, just like, like let's do it let's there. go well, like, I, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. I i do appreciate that um and i want to say too you know it's um it was just time and it's not something that I think that I'm a fantastic person for doing. It's right. it's the bare minimum that people with the privilege to stand out and not really be persecuted for it. You know, it's it's what we should be doing. Um, that said, we are still just you know a bunch of a bunch of white girls and you know a couple people of color sprinkled in there. You know, here and there. Um, but if you do want to come to the event, I'm more than happy to give you the platform because yep. as how do I say this? Uh, as problematic as Pekin problems and how and how deep they run, uh, Pekin's pockets also run deep. So if you guys want to use that platform, and Olivia as well, if you want to use that platform to try and reach out uh, for Black Lives Matter, I'm sure that there will be people there who don't really want to organize so much, but they'll absolutely donate to the cause or donate supplies or whatever you need. So we'd really appreciate if you're able to come out. And uh, like I said, we have a security detail that's that's mm -hmm. there to tackle all the issues as well so right and and if i remember correctly i i saw on your um on social media that you actually had somebody who was driving by and shouting and oh i could and, talk about that all day yeah <laughs> yeah but but my my point is um that person who was trying to disrupt your rally was not allowed by your local law enforcement to disrupt the rally. They were asked to move along and maybe even got a ticket. Yeah. Uh, so what happened there was I, I love this story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we had a couple members of our committee that wanted to actively involve the police. And I'm like, well, here's the problem with that. We are protesting police brutality and they are the police. So um, what we did was we didn't contact the police at all. We held it at a place where it was on public property, where we're allowed to peacefully protest. Word got to the police and they just kind of put up, you know, brigades and boundaries where people couldn't drive through. And mm -hmm. the police stayed a good half block to a block away. And they did their job patrolling. It went very peacefully. The police got some good PR off of it because it didn't become, you know, a situation where they responded to a protest against police brutality with police brutality. Uh, as we've seen happen so much. Um, and we had um, a vehicle full of people actually go by repeatedly. I mean, they, they circled the block, um, oh gosh, over a dozen times. Mm -hmm. And um, they weren't allowed, you know, on the street that immediately circled the courthouse, but we were kind of stationed at like Court Street and Capitol there. So what they did was they went down Capitol and just circled the block near us where kind of where we were and they were screaming threats they were screaming slurs they were like toting their trump flag they went back to wherever you know whatever hole they crawled out of and found a confederate flag oh. and they put that on the back of their truck and you know the officers uh that were there you know they were kind of stationed half a block away they stopped them finally on one of their revolutions around the block and asked them to leave. They were like, you can't be here. You don't need to counter protest. You need to be at least a block away. Don't get in the way. And what they decided to do was, well, you know, the cops left. They came around the block again. <clears throat> and this time they, I mean, they came flying around and we had people in the street and they almost hit somebody and mm -hmm. uh, made it out to be like, it was that person's fault for existing in the street as we've seen so often happen. And what actually happened was one of our brave rogue protesters stole the confederate flag off the back of their truck and just like that. ran off to the day with it and it, once they made their you know their round around the block you know they were pissed of course and they sent somebody on a motorized scooter to try and get it back well send a moped into a crowd 
it's a terrible idea, you know. So he ended up actually getting physically turned around by protesters and sent the other way. And then the cops ticketed all four of the people who were disrupting us. Nothing ever right. happened about the flag. You should not be flying that. It's no place for it. Mm-hmm. And the cops ended up just saying, you know, it even though it could have, you know, gone so badly, it actually went really well. It remained peaceful. And uh, at the point that the guy drove his his moped into the crowd, I actually happened to have the megaphone in hand, even though it wasn't really my event. And I was like, all right, guys, what I want you to do, since it's unsafe, my, my cat's trying to get on my laptop, get out of here. Um, <laughs> since, since it's unsafe right now, you know, I just said, you know, what I want you to do is back up to the barricade, or at least to the crosswalk where it is, that is our space. And so they, I mean, I had to say it once, they did. They backed up and then I said, just, I want you to take a knee and raise your fist. And every single person there did it. And I think that that was my, my favorite part of the entire event was just watching mm-hmm. these people who had just been attacked take a knee in response and be like, mm-hmm. you know, we're not going to take it. We'll, we'll be silent, but we're going to be a presence here and we're not going to leave. And right. it was just powerful. I mean, I got goosebumps in 90 degree weather. It was, mm-hmm. it was amazing. Yeah. But yeah, to answer your question, they, uh, the, the short version is they, they disrupted over a dozen times and they got the tickets. So right. it right. was absolutely safe. It was amazing. So- Oh, that's, thank you for sharing that story yeah. because that it, it's inspirational on two different levels. So you've got, you've got these people coming together, a couple hundred people in Pekin, you know, yeah, su- super white, town. super yeah. white. Yeah. Reputation yeah. as a sundown town and standing up, standing up for black lives matter, um, in support of black lives matter, um, standing up, to hecklers and following following instructions of the organizer so that everybody stays safe um and also you know it gives me hope when i hear that uh the pekin police didn't vilify you guys for assembling to say what you wanted to say and yeah. and uh, and show your support for black and brown people yeah. that the Pekin police actually um, protected you from yeah. the from and the they, hecklers uh, and that's very very yeah we we need we need those little nuggets of hope right now yeah, absolutely. and that is you know we really do and and yeah. the inspiration of uh, of our our next gen guys and our and our our white girls and our white girls in Pekin. Yeah, we need we need all we need all of us working yeah. together for this change. Absolutely, and I will say you guys are just absolutely commendable. I mean, you guys range from from what seventeen ish to in your twenties, and when I was in my early twenties, like that was around the time of Mike Brown and Ferguson, and I just can't imagine stepping up at the level you did, especially you know six years ago. Uh, there's just been, even since six years ago, there's been such a, a dynamic change where we at least have some of the support. We have these, you know, next gen kids or these Gen Z kids who are like, all right, boomers, you know, we're not, we're not going to stand for this anymore. And it's just absolutely commendable what you're doing. So I appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you all. Kelsey, are there any questions before we say goodnight? There's definitely lots of love on the Facebook post. So um, for oh, all good. The uh, panelists, make sure you check those out at the end. Um, <laughs> a huge Heather fan is what one of them said. <laughs> um, Joseph shared, I think that the story about um, the police is hopeful. Not all police officers are bad at some point. We will be ready to initiate legislative change and it will be helpful to have some law enforcement on your side. Um, Jason shared that uh, they protested brutality back in 2000 in Chicago with the police protecting the protesters and, you know, keeping up that with the police is important. Um, and yeah, lots of, lots of, lots of love um, over on the Facebook live feed. Um, there was a question for next gen. Do you have any thoughts on another March? Um, I still remember driving past two weeks ago. Do you have plans for more? What, what was the, um, something about, what was the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you have plans for another March? 
um, but Dan on Zoom here, um, remember driving past two weeks ago and, and wants to join, do you have plans for another March? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we're actually setting up a meeting uh, within the next day or two. Uh, we're all gonna sit down and we have a lot of ideas and a lot of events in the work and a lot of rallies. Um, so we're trying to zero in on order of importance, I would say, um, and weed out the, the great ideas from the good ideas and turn the good ideas to great ideas, right? So we want to make sure that we keep the ball rolling and we keep this fire lit in our community because it's yeah. burning bright right now, like, and the whole nation is on fire, right? And we want to keep that going. But we also want everything that we do to be impactful and to have meaning, right? So we don't want to just um, jump out there and be like, hey, every week we're doing this on this day. You know, we, we want it to, to be heavy and, and, and to have an impact. So uh, long way of saying we are trying to do something, um, hopefully Wednesday, Thursday-ish, but it's not set in stone right now. So um, yeah. So be watching the Facebook. Yeah. Be watching the Facebook and page. And I, I've noticed like a lot of people are, are really into these, uh, the, the marches, which which I appreciate. I actually missed the last one as well, but um, I, I, I know that I like that everybody's like wanting to be a part of that because they realize how important it is and they realize the impact and the change that it's bringing. I mean, and I, I, I say this, I'm just gonna say it, everything that has been done since uh, he since uh, all this has started has had some kind of impact whether it's the riots or the looting or the protests like people might not want to hear it but it's bringing about change and and so we're we're trying to like they said we're trying to find ways to keep moving forward because yes it's great to march but all other discussions and other things need to take place to keep bringing about the change that we want to see because um, yeah I mean, he's, you know, he's marching can only get us so yeah, far. Only get us so right. Far, so. so it's something that we've been working on is phases of our uh, progress, right? So phase one is marching and the generalized protesting, right? And what phase one always will have riots and looting because that's just going to go hand in hand with protests. You got one group that's actually, you know what I mean, trying to do something, another group that's really mad or is taking advantage of the marches, right? And phase two is having conversations and uh, telling personal stories and building relationships is what we would call phase two. And mm -hmm. um, so right now, phase one and phase two are like blending, right? So we're doing the marching and we're doing things like this, communicating stories and um, right. building relationships and changing people's hearts, right? And um, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to phase three, which we are putting in the words. But phase one is probably something that will happen. One and two will probably happen through the whole process, right? You know, something big happens, and, and you go out and march, even though it's a year a year from now, you'll mm -hmm. still end up marching because it'll draw attention. And then maybe at the end of the march, it'll be a speech from from somebody impactful, right? because it'll draw that attention and then you deliver a message to build a relationship. So we're trying to break it into phases like that as well. Right. Um, I, I, have a, I have a quote here from my, one of my, well, probably my favorite president, Barack Obama. And he said, the point of protest is to raise public awareness, to put a spotlight on injustice, and to make the powers that be uncomfortable. In fact, throughout American history, it's often only been in response to protests and civil disobedience that the political system has even paid attention to marginalized communities. But eventually, aspirations have to be translated into specific laws and institutional practices. And in a democracy, that only happens when we elect government officials who are responsive to our demands. And that's exactly what, I mean, you, you just said it. You just said it. Um, 
that's that's where we're at. Um, we have an almost full slate of Democratic candidates running this time. So when you go to the ballot box in November, actually don't go to the ballot box, fill out a mail-in ballot. Um, uh, I'll make sure on my on my social media that I let everybody know uh, when you can apply for a mail-in ballot um, because if you have not been voting you will not automatically receive a mail-in ballot application but we want to we really want to get people to use that uh, opportunity to do a, a mail-in ballot this year and you know if you fill your ballot out at home then you can look at each and every one of those candidates you can look them up online you can check out their their website you can look look them up on youtube see what they've said see what they've done see what they're supporting um and i and i i fully expect that you will have a handful of candidates this time that you can vote for not just a lesser of two evils but somebody who's going to stand with you and fight for you. So Kelsey, were there any other, were there any other questions or comments that, that you want to share before we say goodnight? Um, yes, there was a, a comment um, from Leah saying, first we march, then we run, and they look forward to seeing you all on the ballot one day. So you have at least one vote for when you get on the ballot. Um, and on Facebook, um, Jackie Gunderson shared mail-in ballot applications can be requested on August 5th. August 5th, there we go. See, I knew somebody would. Try and save that date for you. Mm -hmm. um, comment that this was amazing. Let's keep this momentum going and you know, Black Lives Matter. So um, thanks everyone for participating in the Zoom chat here and on the Facebook Live. Um, it was a great conversation. And, and thanks again, Carla, for hosting these. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank, uh, thank everybody. I mean, I, I, I admire uh, the the work that uh, Olivia does with with Black Lives Matter. I've admired her for a while, and I have uh, I have new people to to admire and to look up to and to listen to. And I'm here. I'm here uh, to listen to your concerns, your ideas. Tell me your ideas. Tell me your ideas for. For how we can make things better and that goes for anybody out there who's listening or watching later on youtube we post these on youtube uh it'll be up there it'll be up there tomorrow on my campaign uh youtube channel so thank you again everybody and um keep in touch and i'll see you guys in pekin on saturday i hope i'll see i'll see heather and uh, if you guys if you guys can come over to pekin i'll see you there too but i'll have a mask on and I'll say, stand yes. back yes. For, yes. for for uh, vi for viral safety. Just... Yes, yes, and it's uh, I do have uh, an event page um, that I can just link in the comments on the Facebook Live. If you mm -hmm. guys want a little more information about that, we do require masks and we suggest social distancing. Um, a lot of people come together who have already been exposed to each other. It's not a it's not a requirement, but definitely bring a mask. Yep, great. Thanks a lot, Heather. All right. Thank you.